What's up, you guys? You are tuned in to an all-new episode of Point of View! Woo! 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 Y'all, it is <laughs> yes! Friday! Yes! Uh -uh. Woo! <laughs> it is Friday! We have made it. We have a very exciting episode ahead of us, but before we get started, we have a few shout-outs. So today, the founding member of the Black Eyed Peas, Will I Am, celebrates his 49th birthday. He is a seven-time Grammy Award winner and has worked with some of the biggest names in the game. His artistry and talent speak for itself. And so today we want to congratulate him for being unique and just so great and wish him a happy birthday. Happy, yeah, happy, happy birthday. birthday. Happy birthday, happy birthday Will. Will. Mm -hmm. Well, y'all know here on POV, we love to give beautiful black women their flowers. And in honor of Women's History Month, today that shout out goes to Lizzo. So I know there's a lot of controversy surrounding her name and her brand right now, mm -hmm. but we cannot deny her artistry and her talent. Yes. at all because she is still a phenomenal artist and one thing I do love about Lizzo though is her confidence yeah in everything that she does I love her confidence so today we just want to give you your flowers girl yeah so y'all stay tuned because in the second half of the show we will be talking about fat shaming mm, yes yeah, so make sure mm. you guys stay tuned for that but you guys, the Netflix reality show Love is Blind has the nation in a chokehold. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, Love is Blind is a social experiment where singles find their match in the hopes of falling in love. But there's a catch. You can't meet them face to face for a good chunk of the show, pretty much. But today we're going to be highlighting Clay and AD. So there's a lot of drama surrounding this couple. And... Uh, Really, it really just boils down to your ability to move on in life despite all of your traumas. So let's unpack the story between these two. So Clay and AD have stressed me out this entire season. Let's <laughs> start there. <laughs> because they, they went into this experiment, you know, hoping to find the love of their life and get married. And I really feel like Clay played in AD's face mm -hmm. because they went through this experiment and then they get to the altar and then he tells AD, no, you know, like, I don't think that I'm ready to get married. I don't think, you know, like, all of these excuses. I feel like he's had excuse after excuse after excuse, like, the entire season. Yeah. But it was like... At some point, he acted like he was in love, mm -hmm. but then when you get to the altar, it's like, no. And you embarrass AD up there. Shit, that yeah. was so embarrassing. You go all the way through that entire process only to tell her no yeah. at the most important part. Yeah. yeah. In yeah. front of her family, in front of his family. Like, that was the so whole messed world. up. Yeah. 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 I hated that for her. Yeah, that is so... It was hard to watch, too, but I feel like that is, like, the classic story of just being so torn and conflicted in yourself, you know, because like he talked about on the show often about how he saw his dad and his dad took him with him to go and cheat on his mom and they were married uh -oh. and together for like 25 years. Okay. And so I feel like maybe when he, you know, decided to take on the show outside of clearly probably wanting to be on TV. Right. But I feel like there was a part of him that felt like, you know what, maybe I can do this. Maybe I can find someone that's a suitable match for me and I can fall in love and I can do this love thing the right way. And I feel like as he, you know, started doing it and they were working through the relationship and he did fall in love with her, he's still conflicted in himself to think, you know, am I really ready for this? Am mm -hmm. I really capable? Can I really be faithful? Mm -hmm. And I feel like that conflict took him all the way to the altar, and that's why he couldn't say yes. Mm -hmm. No, that See, is a grown-ass yeah, man. I'm sorry. I'm going to be uh, well, look, up front. I don't watch Love is Blind. I barely have time to watch TV. <laughs> right. But um, from what I have heard, he showed these apprehensions to yes. her because the whole he was way. conflicted. Yeah, he yeah. was conflicted. So is it her fault because when a man shows you who he is or tells you who he is, believe it. Anybody. If he's literally telling you, "Oh, look, I'm having some reservations." Bet. Peace. Like yeah. that's how I would handle that. I'm not going to lie. I think the show sets every couple up for failure mm. because when you are when you're in the process of getting married nowhere in this show are they showing premarital counseling so that is a major major thing because for him for example he has no control over what their parents are even though I'm going to always say parents watch what you do because it affects your child what for the rest of their it, life for the rest of their life I don't care what nobody says they cannot argue me down with that but if they were actually setting them up to be married, you have to go to a counselor too. Because if he was with 
saw, if he grew up with a parent that showed him wrong and he wants to, obviously he was in the process of wanting to do right, mm -hmm. how can you expect a husband to be a husband when they have no equipment, no no understanding mm -hmm. of a requirement of what a husband entails? Yeah. So this show did absolutely, does absolutely nothing to prepare a couple to be a wife, yeah. to prepare a couple to be a husband, and prepare a couple to be married. I mean, the so, show has ulterior motives. I mean, they, I think they want to, they, they, it would be nice if that happens, but mm -hmm. at the end of the day, they got to pay bills, you know? Right. They're they just need solely the drama. there to provide the space for mm -hmm. people who don't want to fall in love with physical attraction. Yeah. That you're supposed to fall in love. That's why you can't see... You know, they're in the pods. And that's so the main thing. See. No, 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 no. I think, uh, me personally, I think the experience is just that. It's an experience. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And if you choose to go be a part of that, then you should see it through. But I feel like what Clay did, it gave that he wasn't really in love with her and he just wanted to be on TV, maybe to grow his own personal brand. Who knows? Yeah. I don't think, I really don't think he was not, I don't think he wasn't in love with her. I think he was so in love. So why he didn't marry her? He, because, because he's, he's not, not ready. Him, he's conflicted. He's, he's not healed. He's still The whole point is trauma. to get married. The that's whole point the of the point show is to get show, married. So why are you there if you're not getting married? Wanted because he wanted to, to be he's ready. Exactly. He wants to. Y'all don't think he wants the Kodak moment? Y'all not I convincing think he me. the Kodak moment. <laughs> no. Uh, Y'all is not convincing honestly, me that that man so wasn't up there for TV ways. purposes right. only. No, I mm -hmm. think maybe what the show should do, I know that the time is limited, you know, as far as they're filming and all that stuff. But once, I know that they vet these people months before they're actually filming. So maybe in that time, they can have the people actually go through counseling to unpack a lot of their trauma, whatever it is. Maybe you'll have some people that don't really need it, mm -hmm. you know, but the ones that do need it, it's important to get those things and those apprehensions fixed mm -hmm. before you're going through trying to match with somebody. You know what's so crazy? Okay, so I actually was going to be on a reality show. I was supposed to be on, I don't even know if I can say this. I think I signed an NDA. I'm not going to do that. But <laughs> I was supposed to be on a reality show on Netflix and they did have, um, I had to do a psychology test. That was the last step right before the show it never ended up happening obviously because i'm young but <laughs> i'm here so I, I i'm pretty sure for love is blind they did the same thing when you're confined to a space they do have to do a psychology test so but it's probably just to make sure that you're, you're you know, saying yeah, yeah, right? Right. Mm -hmm. exactly mm -hmm. okay i mean i guess it's not in preparation yeah. for like <clears throat> you have to prepare for marriage like that i i personally would never go on a show when it comes to that such big of a decision mm -hmm. like you both of them put themselves in that situation. He, yes, he may have wanted to get married. Yes, he wanted to show because he has the idea of wanting to be married. And but so did she. Just because she's ready does not mean he's ready. Why yeah, is he I, there? I think what he, they're doing. He, he tried. Doesn't mean uh, he didn't want he it. Been there. He just wasn't right, but ready I think at the what time. I think what the show maybe mm -hmm. you know part of the premise of what they're doing on the show is they're trying to see if they can find two people that have enough in common and that can compromise enough to be willing to work through all of the unseen things mm -hmm. as in life and things that need to be unpacked. So that's the whole point of matching. It's not that, oh, are you really meeting your soulmate? Maybe it may end up that it was, but are you are you finding someone that you can work through it with? Can you guys agree to compromise enough yeah. to fix all the rest of things? And I mean, it's been seen that they're still hanging out. They're still friends, even despite all of this. So she even, I guess, saw a friend in him, you know? So mm. I guess something did come out of this experiment but I feel like there could be a lesson that could be learned in this experiment like your past traumas how can you move on from that because you guys had mentioned that you know he went through a traumatic not well is it a traumatic experience it probably is. there's trauma yeah that, there's no, trauma that's, that's watching trauma. your father cheat on your mother and, and, you. and then you can't even talk about it you know right. I'm sure he couldn't talk about it with his dad he sure said he didn't tell his mom yeah. until he was on national television like to have that all of these years oh my gosh I know but I feel like me personally I've grown up with some traumas in my life but like Junie always says there comes a certain point like when you are an adult you have to make a decision you make are you going to keep these traumas and like move accordingly right. to that or are you going to like kind of try to do it the right way you know or be a better person, be a better than, person. Than, than who your father showed you of right. course but you know I also know I was told you know when I was a child and it's kind of stuck in the back of my mind my whole life that just because you know what you don't want to do mm -hmm. does not mean you know how to do what you want to do That's true. so you may know yes I don't want to be like my mom yes I don't want to be like my dad but you still you have to go through life and gather the tools to figure out out 
how to not be this person because I know even for myself, sometimes in parenting, there were things that, you know, methods that my parents had when I was growing up that I did not like. And I always said as a young child, I don't ever want to treat my children like mm -hmm. this or I don't want to do that. But there are times now where I find myself and I check myself in those moments and I'm doing things that my parents may have done or said to me because I am not utilizing the tools to make sure that I don't do it. So knowing that I don't want to do it right. doesn't mean that it's not going to happen. And I feel like that's what's happening with Clay. He's realizing he doesn't want to do it, but he does not have the tools in this little time that he's been on the show mm -hmm. or these little times that he's actually unpacking what he's doing to know hey, let me get this together. I don't want to be this person. And as he falls in love with her... he had to drag... Right. Yeah, he's an innocent woman. Yeah, I feel like, like he makes He's realized, I love choices. her, but what am yeah. I going to do? Let's I don't want to... I don't want to traumatize her. her. But at the same time, let's not act like cold feet is not already a thing. Exactly. Just because they did it on national TV, it is actually a term. Cold exactly. feet. Exactly. Yeah. Runaway bride. bride at, runaway bride. Leaving the bride at the altar. He did not do nothing that's like, oh my gosh, I've never you seen that before. You do not want to be with her. No, really a man knows who they want to be with. No, he I think really he, be with her, he no, he does that. not. He does not mm -hmm. want to be with the trauma that is himself. No, and he does he not want to put that on that someone make else. His own decision. <sighs> what? Well, <laughs> love is blind. Y'all got everybody up. You got us up in here arguing, <laughs> right? <laughs> you know, this Clay, ain't no arguing, <laughs> Clay. We with you, <laughs> right? <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm Clay, not I hope you find. I hope you find peace, Ad girl. I'm so sorry that man put you through that. Whatever. I don't know, but he told you. I don't know. But you guys, we have to take a short break. As promised, we'll be talking about fat shaming. Don't go anywhere. We are watching POV. Welcome back. And if you're just now tuning in, in the beginning of this episode, we gave a shout out to Lizzo in honor of Black History, not Black History Month, Women's History Month. Excuse me. It's always Black History Month. It is always Black History Month. <laughs> yes, it's Black History every day. <laughs> but today we're going to be discussing fat shaming. So you guys, mm. Lizzo, not everyone is on the same page when it comes to Lizzo. What you mean? <sighs> so no, we are. Some, just people, just some people just don't like right. that. Right. <laughs> yeah, very true. Political <laughs> activist and a political comment Commenter and activist Candace Owens shares her thoughts about Lizzo. She says that let's not pretend that, you know, being obese is beauty. Take a look at this clip. Do you want to have this talk with me? What is your problem with the LGBTQ community? Oh, I got a lot of them. How much time you got? You see a man, he's wearing a dress. That's gay. That stuff is just gay. Why do I have to look at Lizzo in a thong and have somebody tell me that it's beautiful? No, I hate that. 
I just don't think Ice Spice should be singing about farts. Ariana Grande. I would like to talk about your hoe antics. Sexy Red. Her baby shower. When her partner's uh, face was in her butt. Disgusting. Don't try to make me love filth. Ooh, this is juicy. I can't I wait to see this. Like if you guys her. know, you don't like Candace Owens? <laughs> no. Well, if you guys She's know ignorant. Candace Owens, she will speak her mind, whether you agree with it or not. So that's Candace for She's you. She's unapologetically her. Yes, ignorant. unapologetically Candace. Yeah. She is ignorant. Yes. With her, with her verbiage sometimes, I'm, I'm not even going to say ignorant because that's mean. She, with her verbiage sometimes, it is visceral. Cruel. Yeah, it's very it's, visceral. It's. it's, it's uh, yeah, she, she just gets under my skin sometimes with the platforms that she's on and the platform that she has. She could be so much better, mm -hmm. you know, with the way that she speaks about certain topics. Mm. Okay, like why do you have a problem with the alphabet community? Right. Mm. <laughs> what is the problem? Mm. You are not a part of that community, so what is the issue? Right. Well, today we'll be talking about the <laughs> comment that she made on Lizzo. She right. um, is highlighting. Basically, let's not pretend that, you know, being clinically obese is beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. First of all, I think that her saying that is absolutely disgusting because I could even see if she tried to say, you know, it's not sexy, mm -hmm. even if she tried to say that. But to say that it's not beautiful, that is disgusting and insensitive because why is it not beautiful? You know, like to it, her. Exactly. And either way. Even if she said it's not sexy, but beauty, like first of all, Lizzo's definitely beautiful. There are mm -hmm. plenty of people that are skinny, obese, mid-size, well, SUV, right? But, <laughs> but and, and it's beauty. It has nothing to do with whether they're beautiful or not. Maybe it may be unhealthy, and skinny people can be unhealthy, mm -hmm. you know, as well as bigger people can be unhealthy. But mm -hmm. I just feel like to say that it's that to, you have to pretend it's beauty, that is just so insensitive and cold, and I don't like that. Mm. Yeah. She's ignorant yeah. with some of the things that she says. Like, just because you're not a fan of Lizzo or what she wears, you know what I'm saying, that doesn't mean that it's not beautiful. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because beauty is from within, right. you know what I'm saying? It's not always what's on the outside. And because you're not a fan of her her confidence, because right. that's really what it is. Right. You're not a fan of her confidence. Yeah. yeah. Well, she just needed, to me, I'm not gonna lie, when people say ignorant stuff like that, I just, on the lighthearted side, I just wanna be like, to you. It's yeah. not beautiful to you. <laughs> right. Like, you said that. Somebody said it's that. It's a TikTok sound. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> to you. Right, right. You know, and, and right. actually, when you say that to people who think like that mm -hmm. one way, mm -hmm. That saying that to you mm -hmm. really boils their blood. Mm -hmm. Right. It, it's a, it's, it's an insecurity that they have within themselves because they help hold themselves up to such high standard. Right. God that forbid she gets fat. Yeah, because how how dare you? How could you post like uh how could you wear a thong? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Look with at your you. big body bend. Oh how God, dare you put a thong on? Bends. It's a more of a how dare you because mm -hmm. I can't do it. Mm -hmm. You know, like maybe she has a certain standard mm -hmm. of people that are around her that mm -hmm. you need to go in the gym, you're getting big, and how that makes her her feel. Mm. So to you, that is not beautiful. And whoever you're around to put that standard on you mm -hmm. is what you, why you're projecting that onto right. other people. Right, right. Well, mm -hmm. I do think Candace Owens can be quite visceral with her verbiage, yeah. for sure. But I do understand the bottom line in what she was trying to say, and I do agree with it a little bit. You know? agree with Fran. So she was saying being clinically obese mm -hmm. is not a beautiful thing. I don't think she was saying, like, obese people are not beautiful. The, the idea of being clinically obese, meaning, meaning you are diagnosed an obese person. That is not a beautiful title to hold. But Lizzo, you not know? even that thick. Why she, not, we've seen, I know y'all like, seen like, 600 pounds. Uh, uh, very true, uh, but uh, like I said, life her, or something. My her, her verbiage life, is very visceral. Yeah, girl, her verbiage was very visceral. But on the contrary, being anorexic, being cl clinically anorexic is also not Sickening. a beautiful thing. You know, yeah. some people try to like, put the word beautiful on things that are super unhealthy. Like there's mm. the, for example, there's this, there was this trend that was happening on Tumblr where it was almost beautiful to be sad, you know? And mm. they were like promoting suicide and oh promoting just being sad. Remember on Tumblr when there was like, people were putting those sad quotes and they were like, oh, I want to cry. I want to have that cry look. Like people are attaching the name beautiful to these things that are not 
a good thing to have. Yeah. Being clinically obese is not a good thing to be. Being anorexic is not a good thing to be. Being depressed is not a good thing to be. Yeah. be like we're, we're beautifying things that are not good things, you mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. So to that extent, I do understand what Candace was saying. Yeah, maybe she could have used another word because yes. I just don't think beauty fits with any of that. Yeah. They're just saying the her definition of the beauty standard. She's right. just trying to get everyone to understand, uh, accept her definition what beauty is. Like, for example, I'm pretty sure if Beyonce was posted up in a thong, she would absolutely think that's gorgeous. Look. Oh, she would rave about it. She would repost. Oh, yeah. Beyonce looks so good. Immediately. She, oh, she looks, <laughs> our, now me personally, I think that's beautiful, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But do you I, not think the same when you, <clears> see Liz, <throat> when you saw Lizzo in that thong just now? You didn't think that was beautiful? Because of the beauty that standards that are set on, like that are in my, you, maybe. But the bathing suit is not beautiful. I have a question. I just the have a question. No, suit people want to know. No. Beyonce and is honestly, beautiful. As Lizzo is beautiful. I don't like Lizzo as a person, so okay. I do not agree with that. Mm. Do well, I, what you did wore? I like? Okay, from the time, do I like what she did? I think it was distasteful. Wait, mm. wait. I think it's distasteful when Beyonce do it. I wait. Don't, I, but I'm, I'm not going to lie. Put it in. If we want to do the the basketball game when she okay. had the cutout, yeah, like, yeah. like time and place, yeah, yeah. time and place, mm -hmm. it she was, was tasteful because she was fully covered, and then you know that's a surprise if you turn around, you're like, whoa, <laughs> hello. You so know, was that I the not... right time? The basketball game was the right time to have your butt cut out. She no, was that's performing. wrong time and place. <laughs> oh, okay. that was a. I don't. But she was performing. She could wear anything. That you she was, okay. uh, no, she was no performing. I didn't know she was, she was performing. performing. Then she I, had dancers and everything. She was performing. <laughs> what? Yes, and with, in the video that we just How saw, you she was performing three rows up. She had dancers with her. I don't know. I wasn't there. Uh uh. But she was performing for sure. Uh uh. I, 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 can you please roll that clip one more time? Whoa. I want to see if she was performing. I, I do I understand swore, like I a costume. I saw dancers in there. You know, I do understand the difference between like a costume and like literally just having your butt out. She was if not that's performing. what she wanted to do, then that is her own. Per, what is it? Prerogative. That was not a performance. She is not no, on stage oh, performing. The person I saw waving, I thought that was a dancer. No, no, no. no. That was halftime when the back, because basketball games, they'd be lit they and the half she yeah. just decided to have a little moment. Right, and she oh. did. I, you would not catch Beyonce doing that. Beyonce is Beyonce and Lizzo is Lizzo. Right, but if we're going to put them in the same category and put them in this, which one looks better? No, no, no. We're not saying which one looks okay. better. We're saying the beauty standard. Right. We're saying one is okay to do something and we're saying the other one is not, but we're only saying the other one is not okay to do it because of her size and shape. I think that moment, no. Why? Because she's big? I because if Beyonce no, I did it, everybody would have fell out. Everyone would have fell out. If Rihanna did it, everybody would have fell out. No, that's out of their character to do that at that time. If Ice Spice did it, everybody would have fell out. Who would have fell mm -hmm. out? I would have fell out on the floor I would have covered my eyes. Everybody else would have fell out. I'm not going. I'm just thinking about the people, the kids that was behind her and the, thought that she was wearing a full shirt. And yeah. she stood at the end up. of the day, you got to remember she's an entertainer also. So Absolutely. she's going to do anything to remain in the limelight. Mm -hmm. You know what? She has to. Absolutely. And that's why she got that live case right now. Oh, okay. Ooh, oh. Well, hey now. We <laughs> can talk about it. Yeah, well, she entertained it. And that's why I think. Lizzo is getting so much backlash because you do all of these outrageous stuff mm -hmm. for you to turn around and then be fat shaming your dancers. Yeah. Yeah. Allegedly. Are you really, allegedly, you allegedly, allegedly. 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 Yeah. It has Girl. not yet been proven. Yes, okay. It has, not yet. It is right. until proven guilty. I'm, I'm not going to. Every time they say allegedly they would not have a case against this woman if it was there was no some way, shape, or form, some level of truth to it. Yeah. Uh -uh. Well, nonetheless, Candace Owens, <laughs> you know, <sighs> I, I just want to get back to the the whole um, obesity comment that she made or the the body shaming comment yeah. that she made, you yeah. know. Like, I do think it is important to be healthy, you know? So and absolutely. when I see someone promoting something that's unhealthy, that's when I kind of have a problem with it, you know? But America now, I'm not over obesity. here. Very true. Now, I'm not over here saying I eat the healthiest, you know? I'm not over here also saying, like, oh, I make sure I hit all my three meals a day. I run whatever. I work out. No, I'm not. But I'm also not, like, I wouldn't be in a position, like, you have to understand, Lizzo, 
she has a certain responsibility being that size. This is me. This is my opinion. Yeah. When you are um, obese or big or whatever, you know, or you, on the obese spectrum, you do have a responsibility to say, hey, you know, yeah, I may be comfortable in my skin, but I don't want to promote this as like this is the healthy way to be. You know, I feel like that's right. irresponsible. Just like on in the, the super thin models, you know, you shouldn't be promoting like Victoria's Secret models, how they were so skinny eating one egg a day. Like you shouldn't be promoting that. Like this is not a healthy place to be. That's where I have the issue. Yeah, but, but also even, people crucifying people like Oprah yeah. who were obese and got skinny. Now it's a problem because, oh, you... She was on those in She was on, but, but it's a problem because even now she's, Lizzo, she's getting a lot of backlash right now because she decided to lose weight for twenty. On she did lose, Yeah, she did lose. I don't know she if was she's also on, on Ozempic. That's Ozempic. why she was fat shaming people because no matter how confident she is, she's really a quote unquote yes. shame. So, well, you guys, that is all the time that we have today. You guys know we have the juiciest topics here, so make sure you guys check back with us on Monday, same time, same place. Bye.